We are going to go ahead and get started. As I said, my name is Nicole Lyons. I'm from the Jorgensen Learning Center, and I'm here with my colleague, Julie B. Wise, and we are excited to be here with you today. And we look forward to this conversation. As I said, we're a part of the Jorgensen Learning Center, and our team is um, a team of really amazing and committed learning professionals. And we support leaders to enhance the quality of their everyday leadership conversations. Uh, relationships and results. Uh, we're using the Zoom webinar platform today. So for those of you who are familiar with it, there's tools across the bottom. If you're not familiar with it, there's a couple of ways that you can interact with us during the session today. One is through the, the chat bar. So please feel free as we go throughout the session today to use that chat to connect with us and to connect with your fellow participants. Um, there are two ways to use that chat. One is to communicate directly to the panelists. And the other way is to communicate to all participants. So make sure as you're you know, intending to send out um, and communicate with people in the chat that you choose which way you'd like to communicate. The other way is to use the Q&A feature. You can click on that Q&A and then submit a question that we will then address or answer as we go throughout the session. And there's another way too, you can also raise your hand. Um, we're more than happy to engage in conversation with you today and hear your voices. So if you'd like to uh, raise a comment or have a question, please feel free to raise your hand and we will unmute you and you can join us in our conversation. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Julie to kick us off. Thanks, Nicole. So today we are gonna be talking about coaching and coaching is just a conversation between two people. And in that conversation, there is a trust and there is a creativity and there is a collaboration that's established between the coach and the client in order to possibly just get clear on something that maybe they're confused with or, or maybe there's something in the way from them being able to achieve something or maybe there are assumptions that they're not even aware that they're assuming. And when a coach listens really intently, there's a different way to listen as a coach. They're just looking for different things to talk about, to collaborate with. There's not anything to fix. There's just something about how can we create a safe space to say what we need to say. And as, as JLC, we believe that conversation is the relationship. And when you change the conversation, you change the result. And that fits right in line with what coaching is. We believe that all you need to do is show up and have a conversation so that you're able to change the results. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Two different ways, possibly you as a coach, as a leader, or possibly you as a client getting coached. Nicole, I'm gonna pass it back to you. What did you hear me say that we were gonna be talking about today? Yeah, Julie, I heard you say that we're gonna be talking about coaching in kind of two different ways. One, the ways that we show up as a coach for other people. And to me, that means like as uh, someone who has direct reports, so those who are reporting to me, to my friends, to my, to my children, how I show up as a coach, there are so many ways that you can show up as a coach. And we're going to learn a little bit more about some of the ways that I can, you know, refuel and feed myself with a coaching relationship myself. And the other thing I heard is you really talk about that coaching is a conversation and coaching is a way that we show up in a space with someone else that's safe and feels comfortable for us to show up and, and be our true selves and to maybe ask questions or have conversations about things we might not with other people. And so uh, that whole idea that the conversation is the relationship is really um, kind of sing uh, standing out to me as well. I'd love to hear from the people who are attending today. What are a what's on the top of your mind right now that you really would hope that we address when it comes to the topic of coaching, either being a coach yourself as a leader or getting coached? I know one of the things for me that, um, that I hesitated for getting a coach before I went is I just felt like, you know, here I am with my PhD and I'm organized and I tend to be a little bit more successful than some of the other people that I'm around. And so I thought I should be able to handle all of this stuff on my own. I shouldn't have to go find somebody else, right? There's nothing wrong with me. And yet, why wouldn't I? Why would I take all that responsibility on myself and carry that around heavily? And once I found a coach and started really getting in conversation, it was just so much fun and such a, a lighter way and uh, to handle life. 
because I knew I wasn't by myself and I didn't have to figure everything out on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've felt a very similar way with the coach that I work with as, as well. It's, it's a different kind of opportunity to have conversation with somebody whose sole purpose is to, to listen to you and to really hear you and to be that mirror for you to hold up and reflect back what it is that you are, are wanting to talk about. All right. So, uh, you know, with that, Julie, I would really love to hear from, from our attendees. And it looks like we have some comments coming in uh, about good coaches know the people that they lead and can tailor their coaching to each individual. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an essential part of coaching is showing up and really seeing the other person and being for them what they need for you to be in that moment. Any thoughts on that, Julie? Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think that, you know, in this day and age when we are in essence stuck at home and we're doing virtual online courses, it's nice because we can get to it. However, it's not individual to ourselves. And a lot of times the coach is there to help with the implementation, to talk about, you know, what were you thinking? What does that mean? What's the action step? Get them to be able to reflect first and then be able to make some decisions and then support them and cheer them on as they take action, even if it's a teeny tiny action. Sometimes we need someone there to sort of hold our hand or model the way. And then to talk about, have a reflection back on what's the impact of that action? How's that gonna improve yourself? Or how's that gonna improve your child's life? Or how's that going to you know, make an impact with those that are around you? And in those four things, I really think that helps make the training that whatever you may get, individualized like our um someone who's attending yeah. yeah and it's so essential to show up for the people that you lead we talk a lot about different kind of leadership styles or your your leadership philosophy we had a really great conversation as, as a team about leadership philosophy the other day and i think what's what stands out to me about all of those elements is that you you adapt for the people that you lead just as our um our participant commented, and if you're a leader, you, you have the opportunity to be a coach. And leaders who take that approach, that connector or coaching approach in their leadership style and in their leadership philosophy, evidence shows that that approach triples the likelihood of having high performing employees. That's a big, huge difference between some of the other ways we can tend to show up as a leader. When we take on that coaching role where we're asking questions, we're using discovery to help someone move forward versus showing up as a leader who feels like they have to know everything and they're telling everyone like, this is exactly how you should do it. And being everything for everyone is, is exhausting as a leader and is, it's way less effective. So if you take this coaching connector approach to leadership, you can actually help people to identify their strengths and, and see limiting factors and, and figure out how they're going to move through those limiting factors by strategizing with them and helping them use their strengths to mitigate that. Um, you can help people to lead confidently in their own roles, even if they're not formal leaders, and you can develop the capacity of everyone that you lead. So it's a whole, whole different approach. And it's actually there's a lot of data and a lot of evidence that shows that this approach increases things that you really care about as leaders, such as employee satisfaction. We're looking at um, some data that shows 37% increase in employee satisfaction when you use this coach approach to your leadership. Um, organizational co commitment increases by 29%. And employee retention can increase up to 40% when you're looking at um, these connector relationships uh, that you can have with your employees as a coach. Um, the disconnect, however, is in the ability that, that we believe we have as leaders to coach others. So uh, people believe about, managers believe that they are effective and confident, about 55% of leaders feel like they're effective and confident coaches. So that's another 45% that are like, yeah, not so much. I don't really feel like I can show up as that, as that coach or connector leader. Um, however, only 35% of employees feel like their leaders are effective coaches. 
so that there's 65 percent of individuals who are out there reporting to somebody who thinks that they're a good coach but maybe that's not a reality so i just kind of want to pause there i kind of shared some data with you and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen but i'd love to hear your reactions what was surprising or interesting to you about the data that i shared so anyone can comment and julie go ahead Yep, I'll start to comment while everybody else is typing and you can go ahead and put up the slide so people can re be reminded what you shared. One of the things that we don't think about is this employee satisfaction and organizational commitment. We spend so much time training, 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 and then all of those people that we trained leave and they take all of our training and our money and our time spent and then they use that in a, another company. And so by pausing for a minute and saying, okay, what would make you know, are employees satisfied so that they are committed? And a lot of times it's just this relationship, having these everyday leadership conversations to really get to know the person both personally and professionally. And they don't have to be, um, you know, scheduled hours at a time. It could just simply be on a daily basis. You walk through the hallway and you get to know them and you can have these teeny tiny little coaching conversations with them all the time. And so, uh, Another thing that came to me as you were talking about this, along with the retention and adaptability, is that this idea of asking everyone what they're thinking about. I can remember when I first started as a coach and I would um, be hired and I felt this pressure, humongous pressure that I had to go in and I had to fix everything, right? They were calling me in because they thought something was wrong. And my coach said, well, what if there's nothing to fix? What if all they need is space to talk and collaborate together? And so I went in one time without any plans, without any questions, without anything. And I just showed up and I said, so what's on your mind today? What are you worried about? What's keeping you up at night? And as they shared, we wrote them on the board. And then I said, so what are some ideas that we could possibly do to move these things out of the way? I didn't have to really do anything. And it was the best, most exciting day that I've ever had. And it was fun and it was light. And I think, you know, when you say about this difference between, you know, the coaches who think they're doing a good job and then the people who aren't you know, who really truly are. I think sometimes those coaches who aren't necessarily doing a good job is because they're the one who's doing all the talking. Mm -hmm. And so the employees don't feel heard. And in essence, that's the idea is for a coach to really sit and listen and to ask reflective questions so that they can really get to know themselves and their thoughts. Yeah, that was beautiful, Julie. I think you're making such great points about how you show up in that conversation is going to make all of the difference to that individual. And I think we do tend to, as, as leaders, to focus on the getting the things done or knowing all of the things. And we lose sight of the fact that it's our role to really draw out the greatness of the people that we lead. And I love the comment that came in here as well. I have a couple of really wonderful insights. Um, coaching allows you to walk alongside your followers rather than dragging them or pushing them. And I love that. that it's just a visual that pops into my head of you know, walking alongside of people versus this push and pull we feel sometimes as leaders, especially when it comes to kind of the next comment, which is I've been a part of cultures where they talk a good game, but in reality, coaching mm -hmm. and true leadership take a back.